in operations department. What I'm going to be, uh, what we're going to be in charge of is going to be anchoring. So we run that. Uh, the bosun's may run anchoring. Uh, we do underway replenishments. Uh, bosun's may just run that. So when we get fuel and all that stuff, that's our show. Um, we do towing, so we're capable of towing another ship. We run the mooring, so when we uh, attach to another ship, we run that show. We also run flight operations. So the Bunker Hill, we're a cruiser. Our primary missions as a cruiser is going to be VLS, which you talked about over here with FC2. Uh, Aegis, Spy, the big octagon. You talked about that on the folks, so that's another, uh, our second main mission. And our third main mission is flight operations. Our ability to use helo support. That's a big deal for us. So the Bunker Hill, when we're underway, we're on deployment. We're going to have two helos with us. They're going to say right here, you see this is our flight deck. This is what it looks like. And those walls right there, just above the flight deck, that's a big sliding door. So that's our hangar bay. That's where we store them when uh, they're attached with us. So we'll have two of them with us, and we're capable of landing a third on deck at the same time if need be. So the kind of helo we have, the MH-60 Sierra. We're also capable of landing the, the Romeo. The only difference between the Sierra and the Romeo, the Romeo is just slightly bigger, has a different mission. The Sierra's mission is going to be anti-submarine warfare. So what they're going to do, they're going to go out, do circles around us and the strike group, and uh, drop buoys and such to search for helos, or uh, to search for submarines, pardon. So they're going to go out and search for these submarines, making sure no one's trying to attack us that we can't see. They're also going to do maritime interdiction. So now they can engage these submarines because they're going to have torpedoes. They're going to have missiles on board. So now they can shoot the submarines 2,000 feet below the water. They can also shoot the ships. And also, they're going to do surveillance and reconnaissance. So when they're doing the reconnaissance, what they're going to do if we're going into an operating area, they'll go out and take pictures. They'll go out and check out what's going on in an area, see if there's any hostile activity that we need to be aware of. So that way, we can go in and we can engage these bad guys. Uh, not listed on here. They're also, uh, primary job is going to be search and rescue. So the same, uh, same stuff you guys talked about in the forecastle with the search and rescue, they're going to be doing the exact same stuff out of the helo. Instead of jumping out of a, off the boat, they're going to be jumping out of a helicopter. That's pretty cool. So when they call flight quarters, we're going to go out uh, to the flight deck. There's a lot of moving parts. So you're going to have people in a, in a dark blue room. They're going to be doing their stuff in there. There are going to be people on the bridge doing their stuff on there. And what we're going to be doing out here on the flight, uh, flight deck is we're going to be putting this helo on the deck. So this guy in yellow right here, he's called the LSE, Landing Signalman Enlisted. He's going to be wearing his yellow long sleeve turtleneck in the Middle East, where it's 110 degrees in the sun with this heavy hot life jacket. And he's going to be out there landing the helo. When the helo comes, the propellers are tilted slightly forward, so the blades are actually going to be just inches a couple feet from his face. So he's going to be bringing the helo in. He's going to be, you can see on the headset, he's got the microphone. He's going to be on comms with the pilots. He's also going to be using his hand signals during the day. At night, obviously, can't see your hands, so we got our wands. So he's going to be using the wands or his hand signals to get that helo exactly where he wants it on deck. Because if you see right here, this little box, this little box slides along these tracks. And as the helo's coming down, the little box that's going to send a probe down, right? Or, and it's going to try to catch it in that box. So that box is going to trap it, pull the helo, so that way once it uh, cools down, we get it broken down, we can slide it into the hangar bay. So once he gets them exactly where he wants them, and the helo lands on deck, these guys in blue, they're called the chalk and chain men. Chalk and chain. So they're going to take the chains right there, the chalk in the other hand, and they're going to run low, staying underneath the propellers, or the, uh, the blades, and they're going to go out, attach the chalks to the tires, so it doesn't roll forward and aft, they're going to take these chains here and attach the chains to the helicopter and the other chain to the deck so that way it doesn't uh, roll side to side. Because um, like I said, it takes a very long time for these blades, because they're spinning a gazillion miles an hour, it takes forever for them to cool down. So we got to secure it to the deck for the time being until we're able to move it. And right here in red is the crash and smash guys. I like to think their main job is to uh, you know, sleep in the hangar bay. Uh, while that is true, what they do is crash and smash. It's exactly what it sounds like. So if the helo goes down and crashes, their job is to go out, fight the fires, go out and try and save the pilots, and most importantly, honestly, as, as bad as that sounds more important than saving the pilots, is to make sure the ordnance doesn't go off with that fire. Because not only will we lose that helo, now we just shot ourselves with our own helicopter, now we lost the ship. So they're gonna go out and basically save everyone, save everyone's life. So 
while yes, they sleep and that's what we see, they have a very serious job and I very much respect what they do. And hopefully I never get to see them do their job. I'm very quite content watching them sleep because that means everyone is safe. <laughs> and uh, lastly, right here, this little rod is the uh, static discharge rod. So what's gonna happen sometimes, say we're not doing our job good enough or the bridge it is doing, they're daydreaming, they're not doing their job right and we can't get this helo on deck, but there's something wrong with the helo. And the helo's just hanging out above the flight deck for uh, an extended period of time. You see all these antennas. What that's doing, obviously it's sending out radio waves, all these frequencies and all these, uh, these waves. What it's doing is it's adding, putting static on the helicopter. So once the helicopter gets all the static built up on it, this ordinance can now misfire and it can inadvertently shoot. So what we got to do if this happens, we put these gloves on so we don't electrocute ourselves. And we go out with this rod, we put the clamp on the metal on the deck, and we just touch the side of the uh, helicopter with this metal pole. So it alleviates that static, no missiles go off, no one dies, and everyone's happy. It's a good day. It's morbid. It's flight operations. It's pretty boring. I'm trying to make it entertaining for you guys, but it's actually, it's pretty boring. We do it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're underway all day, every day, and it's very boring. It's very monotonous. But uh, if you guys want, by all means, you can come up and uh, try on the, the vests and the helmets and take pictures if you want.